send out in the future match area for the next round of action here from Pittsburgh. Cyclif in the booth with Brian David Marshall. And we're ready for round number seven. We're kind of winding our way down through day one here. And uh, we've got Alexander Hain versus Matt Costa. Well, we're ready for game two here because Alexander Hain has a first turn am uh, <laughs> amulet of vigor. That is a good start. <laughs> now, that doesn't guarantee him victory, but it's about as good as it gets as far as starts go here. Mm, is this a second amulet or is he going to cast Ancient Stearns here? There's certainly a big difference between the two. Yeah. It's stirrings. Yeah, the double amulet draws are the ones that are absurd, right? Yeah. Like, where you just, you can just win on turn two. He whiffed. Did he whiff? Goodness sakes. Just puts a Simic Growth Chamber into play, picks up his gemstone. Oh. oh, he does have that, but he must have not had anything to go for. Huh. All right, well, he's got the double amulets here. So that means that every time a land enters the battlefield tapped, he gets to untap it, tap it, and then untap it again. So, you know, if, for example, he plays another Simic Growth Chamber, he can just get four mana off that Simic Growth Chamber and then bounce it to his hand. Ridiculous. Well, he could easily play a Titan next turn. Cost is going to crack his fetch land for his steam vents and then pass the turn back. Yeah. Has his main deck roast in hand, which is going to just kind of sit there. Ah, he's got Suva here. Crack it. Crack it. So that's four mana. Bring it back. And <laughs> play a primeval titan. So he does have it here, but remand is going to set it back. But, God, that was just from playing a <laughs> land. That wasn't Summer Bloom, right? That wasn't anything crazy. Uh, it was just tap, you know, a bounce land. D double amulet is just you're playing a different game of magic yeah. than, than your opponent. Totally. You have so much mana at so early in the game. Oh, no. Casta, Costa has to just discard here. Oh, that is brutal. He even has a Vendillion click in his hand as well. Couple of Splinter Twins, it yeah. looks like. Oh, that's so rough for him. He could have Vendillion clicked on draw step there, maybe taken Alex's only primeval titan. You know, one thing about the double amulet hands is uh, that look they at don't this, though. Cavern of Souls from Alexander Hain does, doesn't go for it here. Okay, so he's going to set it up for next turn when he knows that he can resolve the titan basically no matter what. He doesn't have enough mana with just the cavern, but draw step. All right. So he can do it now. Yes, yeah, this is now gonna he's going to do it. Click. All right, so here's Vendillion Click. This is where Alex doesn't have the mana. Let's see what you got out. Oh, he's oh, got he has two, two prime, prime evils Titans. anyway. <laughs> That's not even fair. Goodness <laughs> sakes. Come on, Alex. <laughs> I was like, wow, that's kind of weird that Alex would let him. Oh, he has two primeval titans. Goodness sakes. Now Costa has to decide if he wants to take anything at all, and <laughs> also if he's going to survive. Because we're going to see Primeval Titan here. And usually once that loop starts, especially with the amulets going, they don't look back. With double amulet, you, you're able to get the Sun Home Fortress and, uh, you know, go get the double strike going on there along with uh, yep. taste and vigilance and, and all that fun stuff.
So that was all with the Vesuva amulet triggers on the stack. Yep. He named Giant, I'm sure. And bang. Primeval Titan. Now the fireworks really start for Alex. Like you mentioned, BDM, with the double amulets going, things can get out of hand pretty quickly here. And then Matt Costa's chances of winning this game have shrunk down significantly. So is that Slayer Stronghold and Boros Garrison? Yep. Taps them to put... Twice? <laughs> so it's now a 10 power? Yep. Vigilance? Primeval Titan? Yep. And now all he's got to do is get enough mana and action in there to activate Sun Home. And we're talking about a double striker for 20, which is exactly what he needs to get over that Vendillion Click and kill yeah, him. Vendillion Costa. Click can absorb one point of damage. Mm -hmm. here. Does he have the Sun Home Fortress in hand? No. Oh, maybe he does. Realistically, he, he probably has the time here to just kill him next turn anyway. Like, if he can't kill him this turn, it probably doesn't hurt him. You know, getting a Primeval Titan on the battlefield in Modern is... It's huge, right? I mean, I think Matt has a roast in his hand, and it just doesn't do anything. <laughs> it's not, not enough? Yeah. It's, I think he might have Bolt Roast. Okay, well, Bolt Roast is business. Yeah, and it looks like Alex is going to go get a couple of Teleria West here. Attacks, just attacks for 10 here. But he has set himself up, self up quite nicely here. Also, that click drew him into Slaughter Pact, too. <laughs> In case that becomes relevant, though, no, it doesn't look like it is. No. Go. So I think Costa is down to ten and down to nine here. And he does have a cryptic command. And the mana to cast it, okay. So another primeval titan in hand. Yeah. That's six mana. Let's do it again. I, I guess he can counter bounce here. Does, does bouncing the other primeval, I guess it just buys him a turn? Does it even buy him a turn? He, can, he still hasn't made his land drop for the turn. Mm. So he can just replay the primeval titan and set it all off again. If he's got another bounce land, yeah. w which he should? Yeah, you know, that doesn't work either way. So Matt Cost is going to let him do it. Yeah, this thing is just falling away from him. I guess it, it ends up being a tap down your team scenario here for Costa. A pair of Simic Growth Chambers for Heen. Pick up the Telaria Wests. Take a bunch of mana, pick up Flaria West. It's always like this with this deck, right? <laughs> like it's like once they hit that Titan, there's some number of arcane things once, that once end they up get their happening. Free eight mana. Yeah, then they find a win one way or another. All right, I'm gonna transmute Telaria West. Thinking about Pact of Negation here for Costa. Is that what he's? contemplating do I need to fire off this 
this cryptic command right now to not die. Are you going to let me get packed in negation? And Koss is going to have to consider, is that even what he wants to get? Is that, does it matter? Right, Summoner's Pact represents another, another Titan. Yeah. Which means if he taps down the team here, he goes, okay, go get a Titan, give it haste, kill you anyway. All right. It is Pact of Negation that Alexander Hain grabs. And just store that one away safely in the old hands, and he's going <laughs> to go ahead and transmute another Teleria West here. Like, I don't plan on having to pay for these next turn. He gets another Pact. <laughs> yep, that's land number 10 for him as well. Both of them attack, and Matt Costa lets that happen. <laughs> so it's an 8 6 primeval titan. And a regular old 6 6 primeval titan. Neither of them lethal on their own currently. Trigger, 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 trigger. Oh, oh, but yeah. there's Sun Home, and he has floated enough mana to give maybe both of them double strike. Yeah, he can actually give both double strike. <laughs> and Costa dies with Cryptic in hand. So brutal. Th th this Amulet Bloom deck is just so powerful when it does the double Amulet thing like you mentioned. Yeah. It's just off the chain. That was ridiculous. I mean, Costa had Cryptic in hand, one of the most powerful spells in Modern in his hand, and it just did not matter. Every step of the way, Alex is like, I can get this then. If you do this, then I'll get this instead. And if you don't do anything, then you are dead. Yeah, kind of cost did stumble for a turn on mana there. But just just brutal from the... Uh, <laughs> brutal turn from uh, Alexander Hayne. All right, well, let's take a look at what Huey's up to. We got to see him on the replay match last round. So, you know, he's playing Storm. He's down a game against the John deck. He is. It looks like uh, he had a Blood Moon Inquisitioned away from him as well. Yep, here's another Blood Moon. Okay, well, that's good business, though he is going to have to find a way to get rid of this Tarmogoyf. If he does, he'll probably be in good shape. Uh, Blood Moon against Jund is nearly game ending. Right now, the Goyf's 3-4, uh, you can see in the lower left-hand corner. Oh, you mean on the Tarma graphic? Yes. Oh. You yeah. Have you been waiting on that one, or have yeah, you used buddy. it before? Oh, no. <laughs> the the Tarma graphic appears often. <laughs> Tarma graphic's a uh, very important member of our coverage team. All right, there's a Swamp for Campbell. Oh, geez. Yeah, no, so Huey's definitely has some work to do. There's two Abrupt Decay in the main deck for Campbell. He's got another one in the sideboard. He probably will have brought in that one as well. He does need to find a basic forest if he's going to cast it and free up his lands from the Blood Moon. But the fact is, he's ahead on board. Uh, oh, double Abrupt from. Decay in hand. Holy smokes. And that one Swamp. Wow, this is actually pretty good for him because it means he does get to cast Tassiger at some point here, although looks like his graveyard is only one card at the moment. But yeah, he's he's got really good pressure on Huey here. Is this going to be a Pyromancer Ascension? What is what is Huey up to? I'm just going to think about it for a minute. the Ascension. What, does he have another Gitaxian probe here? He does. Get a counter on it.
Yeah, we'll do yeah, two, two ascensions. He's going to pay the life here. Yeah. Get a counter. Oh, oh and look it at pays this. off for him. Off he goes. That was the third serum visions of the game for him. Two in the yard means that Pyromancer Ascension is now active. Huey's at 10. Very unlikely to take lethal damage next turn, which means he, he's going to have that wide open window. Keeps them both on top. To go nuts here. Can Derek Campbell draw a basic forest? That would get him a lot of the way there. He would be aiming it at the Pyromancer Ascension rather than the Blood Moon. And he's just going to rumble with both. Sure. Take four. Down to six for Huey. But he gets this critical untap yeah. step here. And he, now he gets to try to go off. He just found a Gitaxian <laughs> probe. And here we go. I need a fresh sheet of paper. So this is Storm Count, Mana Count. Blue, Red, Storm. All right, so if you guys can see it on the screen, I know it's a little hard to see, but it's right there. Left column is his blue mana, middle column is his red mana, and right is storm count. So here he goes. Heretic Ritual yeah, right gets there. him six mana and one storm. Ugh. Here's a mana Morphos, which is going to get him, net him four blue mana, four red mana, and storm count of two, plus two cards in his hand, by the by. Use up one blue to go to three, four, and three to place the light of hand. By the way, I just love how Huey lays this out. Like, for our job, it makes it easier. For everybody at home, you can actually see what's going on visually. I love it. Oh, there's the grape shot. All right, so wind condition acquired. He also found another island out of that mess. He knows he's not passing the turn back, and if he does, he's dead anyway. So he's going to go ahead and use Gitaxium Probe and pay the life his, for he it. He uses one of his blue mana for it, right? I don't think he did. No, he didn't. He just paid life for it. Draw two cards off of it. Oh, wow. Second Ascension. Ritual trigger. There is one in the yard. This is getting complicated. But he's at three blue, six red, and six storm count now. With nine mana. He has nine total mana in his pool. I believe we're in the splicing phase, too. Uh, you are correct. <laughs> we have entered the splice zone. <laughs> Three fourteen in the storm count seven now. Who's having fun? Ritual is going to trigger the other Pyromancer Ascension, keeping him at three blue mana. <laughs> I, I, I overheard. And uh, net him four mana here off of the Ritual, so he's at 18. <laughs> I, I overheard Huey talking about his match that was being played last round. And he's watching sort of from the rail at, at the replay. Mm -hmm. He's like, oh, this is where Ulamog gets cast. I'm like, who cast it? <laughs> he makes enough mana in He deck. does. <laughs> he could cast Emrakul right now. All right, Desperate Ravings goes on the stack. All right, Wincon down, but eh, not super important. It'll be back. That's right. And he gets to do it again. I also saw that he does have an empty of the warrants in his hand, which he's brought in and out of the sideboard. And I think that could get the job done here as well. <laughs> okay. But he's got a pass of flames in hand. He has it in hand already? Yeah. Okay, great. All right, well, we're just going to stick on this one just to see the end, although our main match is underway here. You can see it in the lower right-hand side. We we'll jump right back down to that in a moment, but I don't want to interrupt Huey. All right, yeah. so he, he's going he's gonna to show the passing flames. Let's jump over to our main match as Huey even thing, evens things up against Jund and forces a, a game three there. Huey told me an absurd story, by the way. I'll, I'll tell it after this game. you got to remind me. He, he said there was one game he played that he said it was the one game was worth the price of admission to fly here, pay for it, hotel, <laughs> everything. One game. Uh, he said it's one of the sickest games he's ever played. And that guy's played 
a hell of a lot of magic in his day. To, to me, that's the hallmark of some of the, of, of the great players. This game is like they they're actually chasing that sick game. They want they want to play the great game. I'm going to keep you in suspense, but he right. found it. <laughs> <laughs> Did he cast a Wilmog? <laughs> <laughs> Let's just say it's the equivalent. Yes. <laughs> All right. Meanwhile, we're back. We're back on Blue Red Twin versus Amulet Blue. Mm -hmm. Hane up a game. Hane with the double amulet drawn game one went off. Yeah. <laughs> Was patient about it. But absolutely tore it up after he hit that first uh, primeval titan. A little bit of a, a slower draw here for Alexander Hain. No amulets, no bounce lands? Yeah. Whereas this is more or less uh, the dream scenario for the twin deck, right? You know, yeah. You have to get to cast a Pestermite at the end of the turn, potentially untap and kill your opponent. I mean, does he have a, a twin in his hand as well? Because it's certainly possible that he does that. You know, Alexander Haynes' deck is not big on interaction, certainly not game one. It doesn't really do anything outside of the pact. The His pact big interaction is the, Swan Song. The, mm, yep. Well, here's the Pestermite. Okay. Now, the one card that Alex does have access to is Slaughter Pact, but he's only got one. Costa has no real reason to do much here other than start beating down. Also, he does, doesn't have a Splinter Twin anyway. Oh, there's the amulet. Interesting. You know, I think Costa has an ancient grudge in his hand, maybe. Oh, is that the red card I saw? Yeah, I that, that, that looks is. right. This Calaria West picks it up and uses it to transmute. And I still have two mana floating here. Gets a pact of negation. Okay. Autumn Bridger, Chris Gentle, Serge Henry back. Autumn Bridger, Chris Gentle, Serge Henry back. Please report There it is. Ain't you grudge? Take down your amulet. Mm, Costa's got to be happy with that. Keeps the really broken stuff from happening. And he's got a couple of spell snares in hand to keep more broken stuff from right. happening. You know, counters bloom. Th these are the draws, I think, that have scared people off from the amulet bloom deck like well what do i do when i you know when they kill my amulet mm -hmm. I mean, that's gonna happen in any deck you play right sure you know? well yeah but i mean this does tend to do there's, there's not a lot of redundant so pieces little, to yeah the amulet. it just has not a lot of play right like you know at, at, at the point like at this point costa's kind of having his way with him here Okay. Some visions, sure. Attention players. Final round. Areas are being posted. 1130 standard. And that's... Yeah, hey, hey, I've got the pact of negation. I can protect it all if I can just put it together. Okay. 
So he passes the turn back to Costa. Costa's just a I'll do three a turn. <laughs> You could deal with these. I mean, th you've seen it a lot of times, right? I mean, <laughs> this this is often how this thing ends up winning is just pecking away with these little value creatures and protecting them. And then sometimes it's like, whoop, gotcha. <laughs> we'll say that Costa is flooding out a little bit here. He, he's got six mana on the table now. And here's oh. a hive mind. He needs an answer for that oh almost my. immediately. Oh no. <laughs> He's like, well, spell I've got snares these don't spell do snares. anything. Oh no. Hive mind. Resolved? What are we gonna see? Some packs? Thank yeah. you. Thank you for these creatures that I can target with my slaughter pack. Yeah. And he's even got the Pact of Negation back up, too, which Costa can pay for a Pact of Negation, but he can't pay for both, and he certainly can't pay for a Slaughter Pact here. <laughs> Matt Costa thinking. It doesn't matter if he counters it. It still copies. What does he have? What, what, what was Costa's third card? I think he has two spell snares in his hand, but he's thinking about something, so yeah. we got a game. Both of these players are 6 0. <laughs> Koss is down a game here to, uh, to Alex. He's about to have to go looking for a target for his this slaughter pack on the stack. <laughs> But as you said, no matter what, he's got that he's got that spell on the stack and has to pay for it on his upkeep. He could attempt yep, that's the hand. Yeah. So Costa was just going through all of his options, but he's he trying to figure out if there's a way he could counter his own copy. Yeah. Couldn't find it, so that does it. Alexander Hain wins his match two games to zero over Matt Costa and improves to 7-0, and o, locking himself up for day two. Yeah, and, you know, getting a little wind in his sails going into the World Magic Cup. Totally. Costa, though, still 6-1, and one, very solid start. He can just win out these next two and put himself in a good position for day two. With, with a terrific deck for that, and... Uh Pickups to here in the middle of game three between Derek Campbell and William Jensen. Looks like Lightning Bolt took out Dark Confidant, but Kitchen Fink's plus Grim Lava Mancer is a nice clock effect. It's a two turn clock. Yeah. Well, it might be a two turn clock, I should say. He can get in for five this turn with the Finks and the Lava Mancer, but he's going to need to find two cards in his yard otherwise. Whoa, or, or that's a hand. Or find a land to turn on his Raging Ravine. There you go. All right, so last card down. It's a ritual. That was flashback Desperate Ravens there for Huey. Yeah, Huey could be dead a couple of different ways here. I don't think he's at 10. There we go. Now he's at 7. Dead to a Raging Ravine activation. Can't really hand the turn back. He can't, no. Well, I mean, he's got Bolt. I guess he could kill the Ravine, but then he starts feeding the... The Lava Master, he would... If he's got a bolt, it gets kind of interesting because what he has to worry about is Derek getting two cards in his graveyard and just activating the uh, Grim Lava Mancer here. Huey's trying to decide if he can just go off here. You know, he I see that he's got an empty the Warrens in his hand as well. And sometimes you empty 
for six or eight in a spot like this. That does shore up the game, the ground game, pretty nicely for you. It does leave the Grim Lava Mancer as a potential threat. But something you can probably deal with. <laughs> Jared Campbell, drink of water. like he's come to a conclusion on what the right play is here. Certainly taking his time with this one. And when, when Huey takes this long, it means there are a lot of factors to consider. He's normally pretty quick. Reluctant to take the old chess player, reluctant to take his hands off the piece until yeah. he's ready to commit. All right. He's like, all right, I guess I don't really have a choice here. Play Scalding Tide. All right, he played a Goblin Electro Electromancer in the past. So Derek has an interesting choice here on whether he wants to kill it or send it at Huey's head. And uh, it looks like he's going to opt to kill the Goblin Electromancer here. Huey's going to crack a Scalding Tarn in response. Does Huey have more to do here? Desperate Ravens in hand? Yeah. Yeah, he's going to Desperate Ravens here. which half. <laughs> right, even or odd to determine which half and then gets the metamorphose. Which is probably kind of not great for Huey, but all right. Electromancer down. Yep. So now Huey just still has the lightning bolt available. Right. So I think he's kind of hoping that, Herrick, er, that Derek finds the land, activates the ravine, and just tries to get him. Because it just completely taps out Derek. And Derek's having none of it. Even though I think he did find Lana. And you can see wow. why he has the lightning bolt in hand. And Huey, you know, he knew what, his, uh, what, what might happen there. But Derek Campbell patiently chipping away at his life total. Drinking from his cup. Gets in there and defeats the Hall of Famer, William Huey Jensen. So Derek Campbell, 7-0 and with John. Through to day two. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, awesome that. performance from him for sure. And uh, Huey, 6-1. and one. Gonna uh, try to pick up a couple more wins. Fascinating to watch you and sort of go through the calculations. What like is there some sort of desperate play I can make here to put enough, you know, get to, you know, empty the Warrens tokens and maybe win, or am I better off giving him a chance? Totally. All right. Well, that's going to do it for this round, and uh, oh, you know what? We're actually just going to move a camera over. And uh, we're going to get that set up for you. Well, while we do, we've got the World Magic Cup. Yeah, we, we just watched Alexander Hain go to 6-0, uh, uh, playing on the Canadian national team, qualified through the uh, World Magic Cup qualifiers for the second year Seven in a row. 7-0. 7 yeah, yeah. You're right, yeah. Second year in a Even row he better. qualified. Uh -huh. You know, Sean McLaren remains <laughs> just just ahead of him each year in the in the race for pro points. Yeah, no, I'm excited Become for the that. Canadian national champion. Sean McLaren's apparently here this weekend. Also? Uh, I don't think he is. Oh, okay. No. Oh, it was, there were rumors. I also owe you a story, BDM. Oh, yeah, you do. Let me, let me lay it on me. Okay. So Huey comes up, and he's got a big smile on his face, and I'm like, what happened? Yeah, tell me about it. What happened? And he tells me this is one of the best games he's played or one of the best things he's had happen. The match just ended, Rashad? Okay. 
All right, Rashad is slow rolling everybody and making me talk out the video before continuing my story. But I will continue it when we get back on the other side. I do promise. It won't even take long. It, it, it's actually pretty short, but it was a miraculously awesome one uh, to tell, and I'm excited to do it. All right, that's going to do it for round seven, though. We'll see you in just a second.